King. Best of three. Company of Heroes 2. Two versus two. Onslaught. You're looking at the current best player on the planet. It is indeed Asian Mint, winner of the most recent major tournament. He is um, playing as Soviets. He's got some fantastic bulletins. A lot of um, mine menace. His teammate is the um, fellow top-level Korean, Asher Blong, playing as Brits, a faction he needs little introduction to. He's played a lot of them at the top level, not just on this most recent patch. You've got Love Nest, possibly one of the best players of all time, with somebody that only... The only person that rivals him on those all-time greatest standings, the only person, is his teammate, Dev M. This is the Mega Powers. It's like Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Randy Savage as a tag team. It, it should not happen. It should not be possible. It's like uh, the United States and the Soviet Union teaming up to take on Germany. It's just, it's not going to go well. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. This is not one versus one. This isn't that uh, old familiar mano a mano that these two guys are so familiar with this is two versus two a completely different animal combat engineers looking likely to die here can the car 98 ks get the shots yes they can shot through the back of the head like the mkvd there google Morgan reverses away from uh, the aggression posed by asher Blas tommies I am streaming this live on Twitch, so if you're tuning in, good morning, welcome to you. This will be up on YouTube very shortly as well, so uh, I'm wishing all of you a happy Sunday morning. I hope you're uh, you're uh, feeling good. I hope this helps you settle into uh, possibly your last day before you're back in the office like me. You know, it's a nice way to, uh, to spend a Sunday morning, isn't it? Get a coffee. I've got a coffee in my hand right now. I'd like to de dedicate this... Um, game replay cast to uh, Curry, the organiser of this tournament, and also Sturmpants, they're both solid blokes and they've organised a great event for us all to enjoy, so this is a dedication to you my boys Kilvorgan traversing the battlefield more folks for Dev M, Loveness meanwhile is going for a solid Grenadier build with the MG42 and the newly upgraded Pioneers. Asher Blas going for his fourth Tommy, and he's also, of course, got the Universal Carrier with the Vickers. This is dirty, dirty meta, as you'd, of course, expect in a cash tourney. The winners of this tournament will get $500 each. Not to be sniffed at. Brenly is looking low as the UC is in hot pursuit. Boatstrand is also forced away. I tell you what, this is not looking good for Love Nest and Devon thus far. Meanwhile, Pioneers take on the combat engineers in a cook-off as Molotovs are now enabled. This is good timing for Asia Mint, causing problems now as a rifle nade returns fire. Love Nest fighting fire with fire, and he's got Grenadiers, he's got Pioneers all on the retreat path. This could be an expert stick from the German. Couldn't quite get the squad wipe off, however. Grenadiers are forced away, and the Pioneers and the MG42 will continue the onslaught. Meanwhile, it looks like the Universal Carrier is possibly thinking of getting a little bit of synergy going on on the retreat path here, and trying to pick up Loveness. Grenadiers could get it. He's got Tommy's also. There's one squad down. Grenadiers advance with that Faust ready, but the damage has been done. 240 manpower down in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, DevM is coming back in force in the north as the Tommies are forced away by the folks grenadiers of the same Portuguese prodigy. 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 Oh, yeah, difficult to say at this time of the morning. And here come that German-Portuguese combination. <coughs> That's me. Thank you. Tommies, conscripts, combat engineers. All pushing past the train station. This is, of course, Wolf Hazer, which has been remade for Company Heroes 2 by Scotch, the uh, famous top ranking 2 versus 2 player. One half of the most successful 2 versus 2 team of all time, of course. And he's made this map, so good on him. Or remade it, rather. It is a Co 1 staple. As we see a little bit of a nature documentary there as Predator becomes prey. 
on the fields of the Serengeti. Or in this case, um, a train station in, where shall we say it is? The Ukraine. Somewhere like that. It doesn't, it's a very muddy looking uh, place, isn't it? Rakenver for set up. However, he's passed. And uh, indeed, he decides to take out the telecommunications lines of the Allies. A wise choice. Mm. It's not bad coffee, actually. I bought Aldi coffee thinking it's probably the same shit just in a different tub. And it, to be honest, it's not that bad. 12 Tommies yet to be bolstered. I'm sure it's not too far behind. We're going for a Royal Engineer squad also. With a, a fairly early six pounder, it must be said. Meanwhile, here come Asia Mint's guards. Dev M is uh, still chilling, but we they have new advancement in the Axis forces. It is indeed the 222 half track. Not a half track, is it? It's a scout car. It's got wheels. It does not have tracks, Matt. However, it's uh, in a fantastic position to attack. And it's doing just that now as the Tommies go for the Kubel. The 222 is giving the 6-pounder all kinds of problems. It's going to have a chance to set up soon. But the infantry is in hot pursuit thanks to their excellent synergistic play. Let's check out the centre as um, the Grenadiers and Pioneer combination are coming into focus. The 222 has done its damage with its uh, two kills. Enemy forces are securing our guards, of territory. course, have upgraded the DPs. There's no point building the guards if you haven't got 75 munitions spare. They become such a better killing force. Don't want to keep shooting that train track. They've got Schwer Gustav rounds inside. That wouldn't be a pretty uh, ignition, would it? Asia Mint building of this. We've got uh, Love Nest just marauding through the centre with this 222. It's been left and right. And don't forget, by the way, I know he's gone for a very familiar Jaeger armour doctrine, but that gives him spotting scopes later on, which with the 222, as you might know, is a fantastic reconnaissance capability to have. Meanwhile, here come the boys. We've got three folks trying to do this in the stern pioneer. Raquette and Verfa, however, the, no shield to protect them. It's just going to sulk away. It's blob versus blob action, and the 2 2 is looking to spoil the party. Where's Love SMG when you need it? It's currently protecting against the guards in the south. You see, finds the MG34 there, but the Raquette and Verfa finds him in turn. Could he follow up? Seemingly not. 222 looks for a little shot, but gets a six pounder to the face for his troubles. What a high level battle we're watching. It's worth noting, however, that the players are a little bit tired. This is the uh, fourth round of the action. In the same day, so they're, uh, they're. You can look at it two ways, guys. You can say that either they're battle hardened and they're warmed up, or they're going to have a little bit of endurance and fatigue issues. To be honest though, that can make for the best games, it must be said. When the players are warmed up, so they're tactically ready, but they're just fatigued enough not to be perfect, it, it does sometimes really... Nice rifle mate, four down. And the MG42 nearly finishes off the squad. Cooper Morgan, getting aggressive from Dev M. He's going for an ISG. Did watch a little bit of Dev M and Love Ness versus Stuve and Legio X Roma. Dev M actually goes for more of a support weapon role, which considering he was once known as the fastest hands in the West, aka the best micro in the game, but I think by far at one point. Like 2013 era, Dev M was just known as like a savant of micro. Um, he's really matured into his um, you know, into his play as he's gotten older, and uh, now he's actually, even though Love Nest is significantly older than him, I think about four or five years, something like that, he, uh, yeah, he plays a more mature role in this team, going for support weapons. Nice Raquette and Verfa shot. Is there a follow-up, however? You can hear him in the fog of war. Meanwhile, we've got the MG42 decrewed and the veterancy removed. Tommy's suffering. I tell you all that, Blob could polish them off. There's no negative cover, so this should be fine. Meanwhile, Zis 
firing from afar, trying to give a, a covering fire scenario. Nice Molotov by Asian Mint. Tell you what, if the best player on the planet as we speak uses Molotovs, they can't be that bad. 2-2-2 two, 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 now has six kills. Not too shabby, to say the least. How the this guns found him? And I tell you what, could find him again. Sandbags in the way. Probably won't go for it. Stern Pioneers versus Conscripts. Molotov in yet again on retreat this time. If you, could, if you blink or you squint, that looks like, you know, rank 400 play. A Molotov on retreat, but uh, on his own retreat, rather. Just a little parting gift for his opponent. You see he's got nine kills. Looking to create some virtual grenadier problems. They're being shot at, but they're doing more shooting of their own. Soon to get their 10th kill. We'll have to wait for that one. Here's Love Nest with a mortar. They're a Grenat Werfer. Or is it M Mercer? Mercer? Mercer. There's a name for mortar. <laughs> That's, that is a Grenat Werfer. <laughs> the Germans have two names for mortar, it would seem. Although I can't pronounce the second of the two. I do have a small smattering of viewers on this Sunday morning impromptu nice nade there by Asherblor. Catching DevM off guard. What does that leave his army at? He's got two folks grenadiers remaining. And he's got battle group up in base, and that's why you've got the ISG, of course. More Granadas. Ah. That was from the uh, folks grenadier, of course. We're going to have to be hot on the heels of every engagement in this battle because watching four of the best players in the world play on a really consolidated map as, as Wolfhazer is, um, it, it, you know, it, it leaves you a lot to keep track of, let's say. So you, the viewers, are going to have to do a little bit of your own calculus and uh, seven-dimensional lemmings in order to work out what's going on at times. Molotov in expectation of the first round is, and that denies them cover as the ISG peppers the allied position. Flamethrower, Molotov, fire and fire with fire. Watch out, here comes a stern pioneer, this gun turns around in fear conscripts turning 180 degrees burning down the house 222 doesn't like them much and they're gonna get suppressed and run stern pioneers watch on <laughs> we've got an engagement in the middle as tommy's shoot them in the face folks grenadiers are not gonna like it <laughs> <laughs> Tommies are causing folks grenadiers issues in that blob and groupen. ISG can, is pretty much powerless to resist as the 2-2-2 backs away. And we're going to have some fun watching these games. Nice flare, by the way, from um, Asia Mints, I would believe. Um, I can't see Jaegers on the field, is there? Where did the flare come from? Somebody help me out there. It's usually a sniper or a mortar. Or um, a Jaeger squad. I can't see any of them on the field. <laughs> Maybe I imagined it. Let's pretend I imagined it. Bit of friendly fire mortar action there. As uh, we've got bolstered Tommies. Of course, we've got bolstered Tommies. They don't really have to cast that bit, do I? Guards acting as a pinata. They drop their weapon, they pick up their weapon, they run away. Classic guard stuff. They're just clumsy. They're constantly dropping things. They can't help it. They got. Oops, butterfingers. And then they have to pick it up again and run away. We've got our first tank of the battle. It's this beautiful T3476. Its target of choice is this MG position. And relevant Grenadier. Pack, however. And Rakettenwerfer and Fausto Mai. This could be a terrible entrance 
for the medium tank. However, the pack cannot follow up. It's all happening as the uh, T-34 is well and truly clapped and pushed away. Constructs for the tricky retreat path, I tell you what. Stone Converse needs to get in position. Oh, but the Raketenwerfe is what they're spotting for. They can't polish the job off, though, thanks to the conscripts covering for them. Allied points have fallen to 300. As the Tommies eat a rifle grenade, and it's the last thing they ever eat. It was their last meal. And it was um, a very poor one to eat indeed. It left a bitter taste in Asia Mint's mouth. Bolstered conscripts. That um, capeless guard amongst their ranks. 2 to 2 and bet 4 folks ground is trying to reclaim the northern position. They're a little bit wary of anything that lurks and Loveness comes in to help out. Constantly trying to keep up the VP pressure. As here we go. Two Panzer fours come onto the field in unison. Beautiful camouflage as well. Some great painting work by both Love Nest and Devem. They want that conscript squad slow. This is not negative cover though, but they do eat a couple of well, they eat a couple of deaths. Why not about eating? I've had my breakfast. Here's a medium tank for the Allies. Those got T-34 and Cromwell versus double Panzer IV. Oh, and there's a Royal Engineer dead. ISG. Looking to cause the Tommies all kinds of issues. Nice grenade, though. So Devon was quick with his reactions, but unfortunately, Inco, sometimes the cover means that the squad kind of lingers a little bit too long. Cromwell's had a terrible first entrance. Near that the Panzer Falls are getting Larry in this battle for fuel control in the uh, south. There's double fuel in the south, don't forget. T 34 again, getting absolutely smattered with fire. That could have been a death. I tell you what, he could still finish off the job. He's a bit worried about infantry, and he has every right to be. And you can see this fantastic uh, battlefield and the Katusha. Let's just keep it this camera angle, it's a fantastic one, must be said. However, we're going to have to keep an eye on these Tommies coming in. These conscripts coming in. They're going in for this position here. Let's check that out. ISG. He's going to get decrewed. Could actually get stolen by Ashablar. As the conscripts also come in. He isn't going to, going to indeed go for it. And the Katusha's going to offer some fire as well. Straight onto the MG house. Can he get out of there in time? No, he can't. MG down. ISG stolen. Asia Mint and Ashabar was the heist of the century. Also, the Zis was in position. I couldn't have chosen a better time to do a weird camera angle, a panning shot of all of the forces pushing in at once. Fantastic activity from the Koreans. And we are seeing a maturing in Korean play. It's not the old uh, vaguely racist memes of, oh, they're really good at micro, but, you know, they're brainless. It's not that at all. Ashablar and um, Asia Mint are ring generals. They're fantastic players, strategically astute, tactical geniuses. Um, it, it's it's coming here is from the heart, from these guys. So keep your EU Korean zombie uh, memes at the door if you can. Trench is um, trying to come down from Ashablar in the heat of combat, getting suppressed for his troubles as the Cromwell's now been repaired and ready to wreck havoc. Tell you what, they're going to make the, the Axis suffer now they've got a couple of their support weapons. Down, the MG and the ISG are now in allied hands. Oh, this pack just can't find the finishing blows, can it? Tell you what, they could though, this is this gun. That two pioneers just didn't enough to keep it alive through that. 
Tommies. Stolen ISG is going to cause some problems. As we could see, uh, we're not going to see this VP captured for a while. We are going to see a Katusha rocket salvo. Pioneers have to be careful here. They're going to retreat through Hellfire. And Brimstone offered from the T-34. Oh, couldn't quite get the finishing touch. Looks like DevM is going to prepare for a, uh, a push in the north, it would seem. Try and get this victory point back. But the Cromwell and the Vickers are waiting for them. Vet 3 conscripts pushing into the centre. The Allies are looking to re reverse their fortunes and the pressure. Oh, good combination here. Can the Panzer IV finish the job? Cromwell recoils in terror as it burns up and its crew members likewise. We did see a, a heat grenade a little bit late as the Sturmgewehrs now blaze around them. We've also had the decrewing of the Vickers, so this is a battle for supremacy in the northwest of Volfaza. Can the Royal Engineers get it? They get it, but do they lose any squads here? He's going to continue the fight. The cheeky bastard. Good play from Asher. And uh, here comes Asia Mint as well with those seven-man conscripts. You wouldn't have heard this in 2013. It's 2-2, possibly in peril. Instead attacks the uh, MG34, likely to take it out. ISG, by the way, the stolen one's already up to two kills. Nice attack from the Tommies, but what the hell were they thinking in totality? They're Vet 3. Katusha's really far into action, by the way. It's got a salvo ready to go. That could be a, a nuclear Katusha, because um, this is really close up. Where is it, Hat? Is it on one of these repairing squads? It was indeed on the Stern Pioneers and the base exit of Devon. Could finish the Stern Pioneers. Last rockets come in now. Oh, that was close. Meanwhile, Love Nest is trying to defend the Hornet's Nest with um, the Queen Bee. Panzer IV Veteran C1 with its um, spotting sc scopes. Check out that fog of war. Look at that. Can pretty much. Um, it's pretty much map axe, isn't it? The 2 2 2 likewise. Oh, they can see. It's absolutely crazy, isn't it? One of the best commanders in the game. Pound for pound. If, by the way, you're playing on crossing in the woods and 1v1, you can still make it work, you know, spotting scopes. They are that good. Panzer IV, Foch Grenadiers, synergistically pushing into the centre. Is the Oh, we've got a Sherman Firefly now ready. Through the commander's cupo cu cupula cupola that's it as the su-85 joins in the fun panzer four is pushed away here comes the folks right here horde as they um make their way into the center you have to say horde in that voice it's a very uh very good term conscripts sit behind the sandbag wall we did see a Faust, by the way, on the T-34. It didn't look like we would, to be honest. It looked like it got past the envelope, but uh, apparently not. As the Koreans are starting to really push down that Axis victory point count now. I mean, they, of course, only hold 232, but uh, the Axis have dropped 100 in the past 7 or 8 minutes. He, re he decrews and recrews again. And this uh, game is boiling up, I tell you what. It's like we've got it on a... That we got it on the stove, and it's been simmering nicely. And we're starting to see a little bit of bubbling from underneath, a little bit of caramelization of the onions. And uh, here comes Katusha's. We've also got a Stuka coming in. Where's that Stuka bombing strike? It's going to be somewhere in the centre. It has to be. And it was on nothing in particular. It does, however, cause the garrison to go down. and one of the very same pushing on the eastern side. Are they looking for a flank, perhaps? There is all this open territory.
they could go deep within enemy lines, possibly trying to take out the T-34. But I'll tell you what, Asia Mint's heard it in the fog of war, and he's repositioning the Zisk gun. The top players on the planet don't mess around. Fireflies looking for a better vantage point as again the central victory point goes into Korean hands. Oh, we've got a ram. We've got the push in we were expecting. The T-34 does indeed go down. However, here comes the Panzer IV looking for the SU-85. Panzer IV comes through the train tracks. Panzer IV goes down and is abandoned as the SU-85 is taken out. Panther on a merry jaunt in Southern Territory now looking for a killing blow on the Sherman Firefly. This could be a GG push from the German-Portuguese combination. Abandoned again, we've got an Argos catalogue of tanks in the south. Recruise the Panzer IV, now looks to take out. He is indeed taken out in turn as the uh, Panzer IV of Lovenest finishes the job. And we've got a Roman candle. Firework celebration in the centre. Everything is dying except the Panther, the only tank remaining now after that. They pulled the trigger when we least expected it. T-34 went down. SU-85. Panzer IV. Pretty much everything. As the Panzer Werfer now comes into play in the center on these consolidated support weapons and causes them big problems. Oh, I'll tell you what, Katusha doesn't like the Panzerwerfer. Gods versus uh, Fochrendias in the north there, getting forced away. 2 2 2 on hold fire. Just looking to uh, do a little bit of reconnaissance, perhaps. That was a good attack from the uh, combined forces there, it must be said. Just again, I mean, we'll just check out the graphs very briefly on army value there, and you'll see that we had a stock market crash after the. Uh, 27th minute. The biggest loser, however, was certainly Asher Blar. The enemy he, must have lost a, he must have lost an infantry section as well because his graph dived deeper than anybody else's. Got a lot of people watching in chat, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of you watching this on YouTube on your Sunday mornings. But, um, Callum from General's Gentleman, we've got Kimbo, Napoleon Gaming, Gottel. Gamsgale, welcome to you all. Good morning. Or late evening, if you're on the uh, eastern hemisphere of the world. What's this coming out over here? We've got another Panzer IV. We've got a push in from the Soviet forces. Conscripts possibly looking for a flank on these VET 3 LMG Grenadiers. People say that uh, Grenadiers are underpowered, but not if you love Ness. These players operate on a different plane of existence to the rest of us mere mortals. And they make units that um, we would consider underpowered. They make them seem almighty. Panther upraised the pinnacle. And reverses away in horror because there's not enough anti-infantry at the moment for the Axis. They're going to rectify that very soon with a Brum bear. As the Katusha's looking to take out the Grenadiers on retreat, and instead just um, ignites a fuel cell. Thought we had an anti-dank weapon on those guys for a second, it certainly looked that way. As the Panthers pushed away, Tommies take up the fence panel resistance point. They're going to be forced away in no time. Although, don't forget, by the way, we've got the IL. Two precision bombing strike for Asia Mint. That'll be interesting at some point. Not an expected um, feature. I mean, the ISU-152 certainly is, but... Uh, I mean, we did see in a previous tournament, by the way. I think there was a tournament about two or three months ago. And the 70 grenade forces away the Tommies. That, uh, I think it was Ashablar didn't know how to build the ISU-152. Didn't know that you needed all, all three buildings. Four buildings rather. Every one of them. Here we go, we've got a repeat of the earlier attack. The much like the Battle for France, they're doing an Ardennes offensive yet again. 
<laughs> and the Panzer IV was going ham. Huh? Meanwhile, we got a grenade in the north as the folks around here is marching from that vantage point in the centre. Very low health Tommies need to be careful there. LMGs could make short work of them. Where's this um, Katusha? How many kills does it have? It has 18 in total. Good battle so far, 30 minutes and counting. And we I, I can't tell you who's gonna win this. It's anybody's to play for right now. Asha Blar also has air supremacy operation for one of those point and clicky bullshitty shit bullshitties. <laughs> That's not quite an airstrike, but I tell you what, we do also have um, Reconnaissance Overfly, which is going to give um, Love Nest and Devem their uh, next attack point. So they're starting to amass their forces now. We do have the uh, Brumbear, or Sturmpanzer as you would prefer to be known sometimes. Double upgraded. T3476. Masquerading in the centre. Yes, again, what a good salvo that is. Finds the Grenadiers clumped up between the train tracks and causes all kinds of problems. And takes out the veteran mortar and destroys the crew weapon. Now that is a salvo, I tell you what. They've only got one piece of rocket artillery, but they're really making great work of it. Also now, by the way, got a British sniper. Or a Scottish sniper, depending on how successful he is. Another Panzer of Earth up a love nest coming out. Devem's just chilling with uh, his uh, platoon. Panther. Has three vehicles destroyed. That's pretty impressive. No veterans yet, though. I don't understand how that one works. It's all about damage done. He may have got killing blows off, perhaps. Three killing blows, but not the lion's share of the damage on each of the vehicles. Have all been pushed away. Must be noted, by the way, that uh, the victory points are about to turn around in allied favour. Here comes the Panzerwerfers. Where are the targets of choice? Excellently predicted there. However, the Ziskun was just out of reach. I'll tell you what isn't, though. The Brumber may be stubby, but it does some serious damage. I, the old me would have made the joke, that's on my Tinder profile, but I can't quite make that joke anymore. Katusha. This time avoided by Deb M. From there. Again looking for the slaughter. The amount of anti-infantry offered by Lovenest is... Uh, is a lot. Got a veteran Sturmmanzer, two Panzerwerfers. Deva, meanwhile, of course, he's um, got the Panther. He's just protecting the Axis forces until they get the Elephant. It must be said, by the way, Love Nest and Devam's build order compositions and synergy have looked really nailed on. You've got an excellent methodology here, so I'll explain it to you. Devam's going to use the Panther to buy time for Love Nest to get the Elephant. And um, it may seem simple, but they've timed this to perfection. And you can't say it isn't working. Because they now have two victory points yet again. Bands of Earthers, where's the targets of choice? Taking out a support weapon there, thanks to the good reconnaissance offered by that first round of the squad. Meanwhile, the sniper kills one of them on retreat, and the Katusha opens up. Is this a predictive shot on retreat? It could be. Might take out the 2 to 2, I tell you, it could do that. You need two good rockets, please. Tank gun gone and destroyed, and there's a little bit of lax play from the German giant lob nest. Devon, by the way, is going for all anti tank. He's got a Jagdpanzer coming in this now as well. ISG, the second built, has gone for has got veteracy four. Or maybe he reclaimed his own one. It could be his own one original ISG. He stole it at some point. Big stun goes off. Never seen more Stone Cold Stunners than the 1999 Royal Rumble. That was fantastic. 
I think there's an allied... Uh, let's just see this bullshit. As it flies in from the skies above. Oh, they, they, they just kill everything, do they? Yes, they do. Multiple fatalities there. As um, Bomber Harris is having a field day. We chose a bad camera angle for surveying the damage, but a good camera angle for feeling as though we were the people getting bombed. Very much a blitz cam. Ed's made a good joke in chat. Ed 80 hertz, of course, my venerable casting colleague. When I said uh, can't really use the Tinder joke anymore, it is of course because I am now on Grinder. Thanks, Ed, for outing me. Here's the Churchill. I can't believe we've gone uh, Anvil tactics. Rumba, 19 kills as the Rhombus of Death looks for its next folly. Sniper opens up on the first ground ears. Sturm Panzer pushes in. As here comes Churchill, looking to see if you've got any uh, indigenous populations he can massacre. Oh, sniper taken out by the Panzerwerfer. Oh, there's a good combination for you. Panther and Jagdpanzer pushing away the Churchill. I went a little bit too edgy there on my Churchill joke. I am, of course, a fan of Churchill. Oh, Stuka bombing strike. Oh, what did that kill? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. LMG Grenadiers forcing away the combat engineers. DevM just protecting the center until Lovenest has what he needs. And it looks like he's got the fuel now, by the way. He's just waiting for the manpower. He needs 720 to get the elephant up. 204 victory points versus 201. This is neck and neck. Just like giraffes in a mating ritual. Oh, <laughs> what is the Yagpanzer doing? Veterancy 3 and 2 Zis as we look at Asia Mint's fantastically sized army, 80. But Love Nest has a big one as well, and so does Devam. I've been checking these boys out at the urinals. Panzer Verfa Verfin away, both of them in fact. This is going to be an ouchie for the Tommies. Yes it was. If you don't like trenches, there's your answer. Verf them. Verf them until they... Stand no more. Prepare North side, Panzer Force just watching on as the first grenadier pushed in. Storm Panzer. With a long range shot there. A lot of fatalities. Also causing a glitch in the matrix as a lot of artifacts fly across the screen. Mark vehicle has been pulled down. Wonder where the target choice is here, is it? Yes, it is here. As the Churchill pushes in, this could be a killing blow perhaps. Now the Panzer IV was able to make use of the excellent speed. Couldn't quite get the anti-tank grenade off they were looking for. Axis pegged back. And their victory point is beginning to tell that tale. Werfer in targets. Nothing in particular. Meanwhile, we've got a grenade on the conscripts. Where's the ISU-152? 68260. Where's the elephant? It's got to be coming soon. Love Nest, is he? He's choosing not to reinforce that grenadier squad. In fact, he's building a bunker. That's an interesting choice, isn't it? Why not they just get taken out really quickly? Not if the Jagdpanzer lies in wait, I suppose. They haven't got the pop cap, have they? 
Loveness knows he doesn't have the pop cap. It's 22. And he's on 83 right now. So he needs to kill something to get the elephant out. So all that great talk about build order supremacy and really good ideas from Loveness to Devon. It turned out to be a load of bullshit. Asia Mint. He's got 99 pop cap. Because he does indeed have the ISU 152 out. He has timed it well. Which might mean that he's able to polish off the game. Love Nest needs to kill something in order to stay in this one. Because this ISU 152 is going to demolish them. This could be a strategically poor piece of planning. And Love Nest has uh, still got a full army size. The only squad that's currently lacking is the MG42. Maybe just team kill the Panzerwerfer? I mean, that's what I'd do to get the elephant out of team kill that Vet 1 Panzerwerfer. Maybe, maybe the... I mean, no, the Vet 3, 2, two, two is such a good reconnaissance utility. But what is it doing right now? Nothing! It's not even offering that much reconnaissance right now. I mean, it probably is reaching about there on the... Uh, through the fog of war, but... Is it worth it? ISU has already claimed its fourth kill. These lamed up Panzerwerfers come in and they're gonna prove us wrong now as they take out this conscript squad and a trench. So you call them a lame duck and they become a ferocious battle duck. Here comes the allied point and clicky. take out anything this time. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Wouldn't one of them be enough? Why does it need two? They're trying to hold for this victory point in the south, and that's all they're doing right now. DevM's completely repositioned. Now Lovenest has... Um, the pop cap he needs for the elephant, but he is reinforcing this MG as we speak, so he's not getting our cries for help. The Jagdpanzer, by the way, hasn't got a kill and hasn't got a pip of veterancy thus far. It's been uh, a little bit useless, it must be said. Gets a good shot off on the ISU 152, though. Panzerwerf has returned fire, possibly on a retreat back. Yes, indeed, on these Zis guns, taking out one of them as the Grenadiers push in. And here come the first Grenadiers also. This is a big assault as the Panther pushes in. Rear armor hit by the Churchill. He's looking for the ISU 152. But Mark Target possibly saves the day. Panzer Fours come in to get a bit of vengeance. And Loveness with his excellent preservation, not fully committing. He still can't get the Elephant. And now the ISU 152 still alive with 60% of its health. And the Katusha with insult to injury. Like rubbing sand, glass, and salt in the wound. of Earthers. Against nothing in particular this time, it would seem. It's that central position. Again, not doing anything, but they do have two victory points, and that's all important. 189 versus 134. This game has legs. Let's see if he knows how to use them. To quote it's easy top. T34 goes for a push. Grenadier sitting in medium core, but that won't help them against Rocket as here we now see it. The Ferdinand Elephant. I am well aware that there's some kind of distinction between the two, something to do with which engine they use or something, I don't really care to be honest. Both names are cool. And they're exchanging shots, oh the big boys. The elephant has him outranged though for now, 
And Lovnest and Devem are starting to really consolidate their forces in the center. Panzerwerfer Werfer also helping out in that regard as the Panzer Fall watches on. Vosch Grenadiers peg the position as the Jagdpanzer pokes some shots. Guards have no care for danger. They do care about getting burnt alive by incendiary grenades though, so they have to be a little bit careful. Stone Pioneers taking an excellent opportunity to plant a few mines. Vosch Grenadiers consolidating the southern position as the Elephant faces the west. And anything that could crop up from over there. Asiamint's forces are currently getting repaired. We've got a T-3476. An infantry squad just go down. I heard the announcer say, but I couldn't quite make out what happened. MG-34 pushed away. But no, in fact, Asiamint's repositioning. He's got balls of steel, has the Korean. Could... See where the Panzerwerfers are focused. There you go on the stolen ISG as the ISG 152 is ready for some fun. Ha! What a big shot against the uh, Stern Panzer there, thanks to the reconnaissance of the Tommies. Could finish the job. Misses through the fog of war. Meanwhile, Raketenwerfer against the Churchill. And we've got a main gun destroy there as the six pounder is obliterated. Nice, you 152 is ready for you. SU 85 is looking for some uh, action in the east. Asher has nothing now. Very well said, as um, in chat, as um, he, he's been pushed down to 47 pop cap. Seems that uh, he's starting to ebb away just a little bit. Panzerwerfer oh. screws up any chances of trying to cap the southern victory point, but here come the boys in the centre, and what's waiting for them? It's all anti tank. They have a brief opportunity to make something happen here. As the um, ISU-152 um, is getting some tender, loving care and affection. Rumbear pushes in, but it's in a bad part of town. As the Sherman Firefly causes issues, but the Elephant comes in to do the same. 30% of its health gone in the blink of an eye there. Faust in on the SU-85 as the Jagdpanzer pushes in. That could be a very dead SU-85, but the Zisk gun is in position. And here comes the T-3476. Rear armor hits as uh, the Verve comes in against the support weapons. It's going to be a max range, though. I'll tell you what, that was a good pattern, but not quite getting the, uh, the, ju the juicy areas of the underbelly. Elephant versus ISU. They might want a tango. Meanwhile, T-34 is suffering and forced away. They can't quite tell you what, they should be able to see each other, surely. Just showed that they could. And the elephant, by the way, now Vetrici too. Does indeed get a shot away. Let's go back to default camera angle now. No, we can't withstand that for too long. Pioneer's dead on retreat, perhaps? No, somehow surviving. What a tense game this is. This game won 40. Nine minutes of scintillating action, well played by both teams. Ober's out for Dev M. As we survey his options, he's going to go for another one of the very same squads. It's a good uh, unit if you can keep it away from rocket artillery. We got a Cromwell out for Asherblar. Got a fantastically high fuel count, it would seem. If only his infantry preservation had been a little bit better. Burfers this time on the southerly position. As the Cromwell goes mad dog into the eastern side. This is going to really get tense. 
the more these players act defensively because the victory points are exchanging hands all the time but the Axis have very importantly just engaged a triple lock on those victory points this could be a death knoll for the Allies they are going to be forced to get deep and heavy into this battle if they wish to survive this game one That's a nice um, mine for you on the Panzer IV. As the Churchill ambles into the centre, and there is need to panic, unlike what the uh, British announcer says, because these 41 victory points are eking out, and right now, Royal Engineers are getting obliterated as they try and cap the centre. That's not gone too well for the Koreans this game. It seems that the build order, whilst delayed by the Axis, you just could not compete with the Vet 2 Elephant of Love Nest. I know it's only gotten one kill, but its presence on the battlefield and its uh, ability to keep the ISU 152 at bay has been fantastic, and uh, that's why they take this battle, and they are now winning 1-0. Let me do my dressing gown up a little bit as I unveil my very cool uh, Master League poster behind me. I think that's pretty cool, would you say? We are going to go through the kills on the units now as well. Let's have a little look at that. Which one's my... Uh, I think it's this one. There we go. So let's see what kills we've got. Loveness Army. Panzerwerfer. One has 64 kills. That guy likes to kill people. This guy fucks. <laughs> and this guy also. He's looking directly at us. And look at his eyes. Quite creepy is his gaze as he has 30 kills. Um, 2 2 2, not to be uh, laughs, laughed at there. It's got a uh, pretty juicy 20 kills itself. This guy, though, he's he's pretty much got a bit of shell shock, it would seem, not having the best days, unfortunately. And uh, let's go over to the stat screen. Army value wise, uh, Blah blah blah. I can't really make out much from that. On that 29 minute crash, if you remember that, and then the big push in. Devm lost so much. Um, Asiament kept his forces. I think Asiament should have been more aggressive, perhaps at the end there, to cover for Asher. But there's not much he could do. Maybe they needed to team up in one almighty push, but they couldn't quite get it out, unfortunately. The personal best unit for Devm was Folks Grenadiers. Uh, Love nests was um, Elephant. I told you the Elephant was good. Um, that I thought that was the star of Love Nest Show. It was really late to the battle, but it just meant that they won the game basically. So you can't really sort, you can't really uh, say no to that, can you? Asher Blar, infantry section pretty boring. Asia Mint, Zis guns. Yeah, he was pretty good with his Zis guns. So there you go. There you go. So yeah, it's, uh, it's not a bad way to spend a Sunday morning, is it? Watching uh, four of the best players on the planet play one another. 79 viewers tuning in and welcome welcome one and all Hugh Hefner indeed yeah ah, cold coffee oh oh Let's load into game two, shall we? Yes, let's. Let us do that. By the way, you can't tell who's uploaded the replay. It does randomize the loading bar, so don't worry too much about that. And let's check out the loading bars. As you can see, that uh, DevM and Lovenest have their respective tournament winner faceplates. Devam, of course, the Warpaint champion. He gets a very, very unique and exclusive faceplate. Loveness, the GCS1 champion, donning his uh, prestigious victory. Devam, by the way, just he's also got the OCF, which he was also the champion of Decal. The map is, again, Wolf Hazer. It is, of course, 1-0. Let's just put a very uh, crude... Um, shall we put a 1-0 up? 
just for people tuning in on Twitch? Yeah, I don't see why not. It's not their biggest problem. I don't have my uber cool overlays right now, but uh, we can quickly put a score up, can't we? Yeah, let's do that. It's no problem. No problem whatsoever. Should make the font size a little bit bigger on that bad boy. Select font. Make it like 48 or something. There we go. There we go. There's the badger. I'll also put some uh, outline on that. Just to help you be able to read it. Not white. What is a terrible colour for an outline? Let's go for black. Black is the ace of spades. There we go. And um, I think we are now ready to start game two as we see Devem, this time playing as Soviets, Lovenest as the dastardly ones, the Brits. Asiament is uh, going to be playing the OKW. OK and Ashablar, the mighty Wehrmacht. No USF in either match. Good um, observations by Anta Morel in chat. Napoleonic Gaming asks in chat, who organised this event? It's an organisational masterpiece by Kurahi and Stern Panther. Very difficult to organise a 2v2 event, but we do have a very mature player base now. Of people that have been playing in tournaments for years and they are very they help each other out as well which makes things easier for the organizer and referees grenadiers are the choice of build for asher just showing that they're not quite as bad as people make out but only if you're a top 20 player in the world if you're not that they're, sh they're shit in your ship <laughs> basically Devem with penal battalions looking for um, a westerly assault. Love Nest, Tommies, Tommies, and more Tommies to come, as you would expect. Stern Pioneers capping the center for now. We do have some commander choices to talk about. Love Nest has gone for Mobile Assault Regiment for those land mattresses and infiltration commandos. And um, armored assault tactics. So DevM is going to be relaying those come out, those choices and um, build order options to his teammates. Fantastic two versus two synergies. As we see a huge DPS spike there as Asian globs into that Tommy and forces them away. Grens also circling their prey, pushing up as um, Devem moves around. And there we go, that's what Devem was building. He was going for a sniper. The scout sniper claims his first fatality and um, is forced away across negative cover, so has to be a little bit careful. <laughs> Look at this from the Koreans. They're zerging into full force here as the sniper. Has to get into the base sector. Seems that he can get really close up into the enemy's face there. That MG bunker isn't positioned ideally. You can line up there and fire into your opponent's base, it would seem. Sniper now on his second kill already. Straff back need orders. Strafniki penal battalions. They have many names. Convicts is another one. Traitors of the uh, communist revolution. Or just potato farmers that uh, ran away from a German tank perhaps. Who knows? Who knows? Do we have a sniper from Ashablar? No, we don't quite yet. Just keeping on with the three grenadier fun. As the uh, penal battalions march in. Meanwhile, back in base, we do have a very early battle group headquarters for Asia Mint. Just going to allow both Axis factions to uh, heal. It's 
Stern Pioneer Porsche forced away due to the threat of SVT damage. Jaegers listen up there entering the field from the eastern side. Good if you want to cap fuel. And both teams are sharing a fuel each at the moment and a munitions each, so it's a north south split. Not a west east split, and that'd be a very unfair split if one team had double fuel. Universal carrier attacking the uh, train tracks for now as the sniper claims his seventh kill. Bloody hell, that climbed quickly, didn't it? Penal Battalion push in. Jaegers cower in the crater. As the Penal Battalions occupy it now. Tell you what, this could be a retreat path to worry about. No, we don't see the advance. We don't see a Rakettenwerfer yet either, but we do see a 2-2-2 coming out for Brimful of Asher on the 45. And there's the flank I was worried about for and Lovenest and Devem. As the Grenadiers, Stern Pioneers and folks all push in in unison. Sniper does a quick 180 over the shoulder. No scope fakey headshot. Tell you what, my game sensor is rumbling. I'm thinking this 2 2 2 might go straight into base. And he is indeed doing that. Is there any anti tank now whatsoever? No, there isn't. And the 2 2 2 is going to push straight in. This is fantastic game sense from Asher. Oh, but we do see the satchel. <laughs> he gets it off just at the nick of time there. Was not expecting that. No, that was uh, the heat grenade. My bad. It was a heat grenade. I thought it was a satchel for some reason, but no, he just kills the UC. I thought he could become a kamikaze. I, th I thought for a second that we had a penal battalion upgrade in the nick of time. That was going to be epic if so. But no, it was just a mere heat grenade. Still a nice attack by um, a Asher Blor. It is uh, early in the morning, so I may have confused my Koreans also. Double mistake from AE. Will he be able to recover this cast? Will he regain the trust of his audience? Stay tuned for more. Nice shot there by the Stuka. As he pushes in. And here we go. We've got Stuve bringing on the Panzer IV. Not a bad option. Poor retreat there for the Grenadiers. Guys, I... I thought we'd just start making mistakes with every sentence just to see if uh, it, it adds to the experience perhaps Jaegers listen up only with uh, three kills now they do have the G43 upgrade they cause, could cause some problems meanwhile 2-2-2 two, 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 a new one from Asher for pushing into the south, just ready for something to try and push away that capping force. Sniper, now on his 14th kill and counting. There's the 222. Full health um, infantry section squad member. And there's a nice squad white from the sniper. Asian getting his second truck out. Schwer Panzer. Schlepper soon. Rifle nade forces away the Tommies. As here comes the AEC. That's going to stop any 222 attacks, isn't it? Commandos come onto the field with only three men, of course, needing to uh, reinforce immediately. AEC getting aggressive. Needs to be careful of the Faust, though. Did not get within range. Loveness with uh, good control. And finger quick on the reversal key. Grenadiers looking for a Faust of their own. And they're really low on health. They have to be careful here because the Strafniki are going to cause them problems as well. I think Asher possibly lost um, control of that Grenadier for a moment there. Rakettenwerfer, though. Maybe it was a ploy to get sight for the Rakettenwerfer. It could have been that indeed. That's what he was doing. Always with these top level players, if you don't understand why they're doing something, 
there's usually a reason for it. You just have to wait and see. And indeed, he was trying to snare him. So the Raketenwerfer that come all the way around the side. His opponent's Raketenwerfer, by the way, um, could get the shot in. Dev M has... Uh, let's have a look at his losses. He has lost a penal squad this game. And uh, the sniper has gone down also. As we saw. Did we see that? Possibly not. It's dead anyway. <laughs> Broadcasting from AE. Mine. That's why you may sometimes want a mine sweeper rather than a flamethrower. As soon as that mine hits and you've got 60 munitions in your hands, it. Uh, there we go. Antimarul confirms that. Of course, I caught the penal battalion's death, but we did miss the sniper. That is unfortunate. As the commandos caused the Jaegers problems. 2 2 2. Marauding in the south. Folks, Grenadiers are forced to retreat because uh, these badasses from Belfast are beginning to make their presence but known. Asia Mint with more Jaegers coming onto the field as the penal battalions push in. Rakettenwerfer against the AC. The 2 2 2 have a taken out by commandos of all things. Wasn't expecting that. Also have Devem trying to plant some very aggressive mines there. Commandos continuing their assault. Good dodge, however, by Asia Mint. Pushing forward before he retreats. Do you notice that? What a satchel! I did not break my cell. They shot my canteen. Let's quickly check out the KD stats, see what we're seeing. Looks fairly equal. Asia Mint um, offering the most damage so far. Although it doesn't actually have that many kills. It does have this Jaeger squad on 13, I suppose. Big shout out to the uh, commandos was that one vehicle destroyed though amongst their tally. It still only counts as one, as uh, Gimli's son of Gloin would say. Devem now going for the support weapon orientated Maxim build, and when I was saying earlier in game one that Devem has been playing more of a supporting role in this elite um, mega powers tag team. Uh, you know, this is now an example of it. A double maxim for the uh, man known for his micro. And there we go. Asher, who um, has seen that his opponent's lost his sniper, has now gone for one of his own. Peanut Battalion forcing them away. Very similar commander choices throughout. We've got to Overwatch, however, that is a little bit new. That's the Jaegers you're seeing. And then the uh, Jaeger Armor Doctrine, which of course we saw in the first battle. Nice Mando nade on the retreat path, but the Grandi is pushed forward. Asia Mint is. His game sense is fantastic. He judges the trajectory of grenades, it seems. Or at least predicts his opponent's um, attack and uh, foils it with a plum. Orders, Orders are coming in for the AEC as he watches as the sappers continue their onslaught. Reconnaissance for Asher. What's he spotting for? Sniper already up to four kills. Can actually get a pot shot here. Possibly not. Commandos are chilling behind cover. Daring anything to come and cap that central victory point. Captain Verfa destroys the cover there. Tommy to the left just holding the dicks. Not quite enough cover for the commandos to push up completely. I mean, no, they could jump from yellow to... There they go. Enemy causing trouble. 
No, nope, they're just going to run like Mad Jack with the bagpipes blazing. However, the sniper gives them serious reasons to recontemplate. Rifle nade, dodged by Devem. And the AC pushes him for the sniper, but the pack 40 is waiting. Meanwhile, in the south, Panzer IV is now out for Asia Mint. A little bit of a lag spike there. We've got an uh, anti tank volley of, from the six pounder. Peanut Battalions push in from multiple angles. They've got to be careful about that sniper, though. I'm sure it's firing right now. Indeed, it is. 11 kills, I'm counting. Just cycling in and out, though. Does not want to get counter sniped. Double AT gun salvo. Could finish off the Panzer IV. Oh, they missed for the attack round. That is unfortunate. Grenade thrown by the Tommies. Only killed one of the Rakettenwerfer models, though. Meanwhile, in the centre, Stern Pioneers sit behind green cover and watch as the Folks Grenadiers push the agenda. Got Ashablar eating a mine but capping the points in the north. Royal Engineers have Her Majesty's Flaming Regiment. Double Jaegers, though, causing them all kinds of issues. Tommy's await of this eight-man killing crew. And here comes a reconnaissance Stuka this time. There are many more plane models than Stukas. But uh, Stukas do everything in Commodore 2, it would seem. Could be a Condor. A maritime kind of reconnaissance plane. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Snipers in the act of firing. Pretty content that the opponent doesn't have a sniper right now. The battalions harass them though. Got to be careful. Of course they're 1-0 down in this series, Asia Mint and Asher. Devam's yet to go for any armour. He does have a hefty fuel count though. Pioneers dead to the grenade from the Tommies of Love Nest. Panzer IV forcing away the penal battalions. As the Jaegers give. The six pounder, all kinds of issues. The land mattress, by the way, is now out for Love Nest. This is going to be a fantastic piece of rocket artillery on Vulfaze. I've already seen a game with Love Nest and Devem where the land mattress just volleyed over the train station. Pretty much all game, and this entire area here became the moon. They didn't know how to three syllables, but indeed it does. Ashablar's snipers going hunting. Doesn't find anything on this particular parole. Patrol, but I'm sure it will in the future. Uh, so we now see the land mattress, Her Majesty's implements of torture. Just on the Rakettenver for now. Somebody in chat says Dev M will fuck it up. I think that comes from Helping Hands castings of Dev M. I can uh, absolutely attest to the fact that Dev M is uh, probably one of the best two players in the world ever. Uh, he's more than capable of not fucking it up, also. So you have to uh, give him a little bit of credit sometimes. And the other best two, one of the best two players in the world is his teammate, Love Nest. <laughs> that said, though, he still might fuck it up. Who knows? Can't jinx it, that's for certain. Never jinx it. We are losing a sector. Being a battalions capping up the north side, as Tommies do likewise in the centre. 
We do have Axis armor rolling in now. Enforced veterancy isn't there yet, but uh, they do have seven kills and five amongst the Panzer IV Battalion. And that's what I was hearing. It is the LEFH firing deep within Allied territories right now. That is unexpected. Asia Mint has gone for the howitzer. And it must be said, by the way, that we have no IL-2 bombing strikes or anything of this, the sort that the Allies would have had access to previously. So no cheap way of taking out the howitzer. Devem still without a tank. He does, however, have the Sturmovix. Um, the loiter attack, at least. Not the bombing strike that we were talking about. Reconnaissance coming down for... Um, Asha. Surveying the battlefield. As the sniper continues to open up. And my school of thought is uh, a sniper at this level of play, uncountered, can win the game. And uh, Devem... All Love Nest have both have the ability to build a sniper. Devon looks like he's about to pull on the IS-2. There it is. Indeed he does. Vanilla paint. But a uh, very advanced thirst for blood. Both tanks survive. There isn't any anti-air on the field, so we're not going to see any kamikaze pilots today. We are now authorized to request more powerful units. S2 with its first attack forces away the MG, but nothing more than that for now. Oh my god, the howitzer's attacking the base. It's already killed two uh, Maxim gunners. And we've got an IS-2 assault deep within enemy lines. Checking out what they've got hanging out to dry. Heavy war factory is complete. As the 25 kill sniper pushes in in unison with the Panzer IV. say it's not the most chosen two versus two vehicle is it the is2 and it's had a damaged engine the pack 40 watches on and sector assault is coming down it is indeed on the is2's position land mattress down Loveness looking to save the situation, perhaps. As the IS-2 ambles away, Kamikaze attack on nothing in particular. The sniper's looking safe for now. We've got um, Asia Mint's gone for a Jagd Panzer, making good use of his fuel and manpower economies. He's not floating anything right now, and he's got a pretty well-rounded army. Very well-rounded army, actually. For a 2v2 battle, he's got a little bit of everything. Asher, not bad as well. No rocket artillery for the Axis yet. They seem content using uh, traditional implements of war. Grenadiers and snipers. Lovely stuff. Love Ness Mandos. Uh, rushing into the, uh, the centre. What are they looking for? There is a lot more medium cover now. They could push up and try and take out the sniper, but there's constantly grenadiers on patrol. Here they go. 007. Mine detonates for the Panzer IV. Is this... Is there anything that can answer in rapidity from Loveness? He's got an AC. He's got a VET 2-6-pounder, but they might not be able to gain position. Commandos are looking low. They go for the kill on the first Grenadiers, but the Sniper opens up with its 28th kill. Heard a rifle made. It's on the Maxim, but the IS-2 has plans for him. Meanwhile, Tommy's pushing as the Panzer IV watches on and gives them a welcoming party. 
Big shots from the pack. Let's check out that howitzer from Asher. Ah! It's uh, over here. There it is. Only got three kills. It's currently on recharge. It was fired on the base most recently, I would imagine. Packs in position as the penal battalions, veterans of three, do they escape? Yes, they do indeed. The IS-2 might not do the same, though. Taking some heavy shots. Meanwhile, in the center, we've got the uh, Akak, the Centaur. Dominating. Tell you what, though, the Axis look like they're preparing for a flank. Land mattress on the center, on that sniper. Pushing it away. Good positioning from the Vets. Two six pounder. Looking for the AEC. Panzerfall might finish the job. One more shot needed. Attack grounds perhaps. Misses. And both vehicles forced away. No, he gets it. He gets it with the Yak Panzer at the last second. Was not expecting that. Good push from Asia Mint. I mean, what do you expect? One of the best players on the planet. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Didn't I? Didn't, didn't fancy the Agpanzer. Should never have counted it out. The rhomboid of death. And here we go. A bit more sector assault. As the howitzers also firing. Again on the base. Devem's getting constantly sapped of his powers thanks to that constant harassment. Sniper behind green cover on his 30 second kill. As the Panzer fall. Gives the penal battalions a parting gift. Very generous battle this, thus far. We've got welcoming parties, parting gifts. Just a lot of generosity, really. Penal battalions are forced away. As we see, a huge shot there. That was the satchel, I believe. Yes, it was indeed. Nest did lose his centaur, by the way. Must have died in the centre when all this shit was go going down in the east, I imagine. Can confirm that. A little look at Love Nest's graph. Yeah, he lost everything at once. So it's just off camera whilst it was all going down. We do have Devon with an assault in the west, but what a positioning of the packs here to protect the LEFH and the Rakettenwerfers also and the Jagdpanzer also got a damaged engine on the IS-2 Devem needs to hide in behind this tree where's the protection? Sniper's in position, the Obers push in Jagdpanzer looking for blood firstening for Stalinium rear armour penetrated meanwhile tell you what, this uh, land mattress could help turn the situation but no, indeed, the IS-2 is down thanks to this fantastic AT platoon. DevM's on cooldown now. No more IS-2s for him for a little while. He'll have to learn how to play with one. <laughs> it's an ISU-152 map, though, isn't it? We've seen that. And, um, yeah, I think that uh, it's possibly not the best decision. It could be said, possibly. So that guy in chat, maybe, maybe he'd seen this game before, I don't know. Or maybe sometimes DevM just throws 2v2 battles. <laughs> it is, I have seen it. More artillery fire in base. These penal titans constantly running in terror. Tell you what as well, it's killing the healing, uh, the healing. Those nurses are getting uh, hurt as well. Now we've got a Panzerwerfer. Oh, there's only consolidated forces. The M17 out for Deva. He's just trying to stop. Oh, what a shot by the Jagdpanzer. Stop nothing because he's dead. Constantly 
firing, and here he is again. Meanwhile, Panzer IV. Vectors III just pushes around in the center and causes a nuisance for himself. We've got the uh, Firefly firing as the Panzerwerfer verfs once again. This time on the Maxim position as the Ziskun lob shells from afar. Commandos just protecting the retreat path. Can they throw a grenade on, on said path? Doesn't feel like they need to, and indeed they don't. And they dodge the rifle nade of Asher Blar. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. Where do you want us? Commando's going to hold fire mode. They were thinking of something daring there, but I think they may have hit a mine. That's the sniper possibly about to die. Watch these rockets. Oh, the balls of steel from Asher Blor. He just calmly moves his sniper out of arm's way. Would have been unlucky to have died there. Very calm under pressure, it must be said. Ludnest with the Cromwell about to come onto the field. Nice Panzerwerfer. And the howitzer's firing. This time firing on the land mattress position. So a bit of a better spread this time, it should be said. Cromwell takes position in the east. And the Panzer force in the west. They're looking for a flank, I would expect, and DevM's expecting it. He's putting down mines, but that, that'll also help protect his new shiny Katusha. 192 victory points remain for the Allies. Two shot returns. Fire for the first time after suffering so much. Attacks his hands as the Allies have been heavily pegged back. But here it is, the Panzerwerfer yet again on the land mattress and Katusha combo. They have to watch out for artillery fire as well, because uh, some of those shells could really cause some damage at some point. Is he on? He was on counter barrage at a point. Yeah, he's on counter barrage mode. That's going to keep the rocket artillery guessing. Oh, big shots from the Yacht Panzer. Cromwell's going to try and shield for him. Vet 4, Panzer 4. Possibly. Maybe not. That mine could come in handy, but no, the mine gets surpassed by the Panzer 4. It's looking for the Katusha, and it gets it. Takes it out. Meanwhile, the Firefly is now looking to take out the Panzer 4. Asherblar with a huge assault here. However, the Firefly is traversed by the Panzer 4. One more shot, perhaps. Misses this time. Cromwell needs to help out. Firefly turns its cannon. Bounces a shot from the Panzer IV. Reverses away. Can the Panzer IV finish the job? Tell you what, though, can the Jagdpanzer. As the Firefly backs into enemy action and Lovnest throws in the towel for the Allied forces. Let's see just what they lost whilst that was going on. Devem, it seems, obviously lost his Katusha. And he did have a lot of fuel. But uh, they see the writing on the wall, strategically speaking. Asia Mint was, uh, had a fantastically high population. Uh, DevM obviously had lost so much. Love Nest hadn't got much else either. Um, I think strategically, I think the IS-2 was the wrong decision from DevM, and it was played with um, a bit of reckless abandon, it must be said. He kind of pushed it in um, on this western flank. And I think the Koreans, I think they were, they predicted him on that last assault. He did it three times in total. And um, yeah, it wasn't the best. Sniper was also, of course, uncountered. It's very rare you would ever expect Love Nest and Devem to not counter the sniper. As it was their fourth series of the day, it could be due to fatigue. They're just trying to save themselves. But uh, either way, GG well played to the Koreans. Let's just show the game stats as well. Um, the most valuable unit for Asher was the Grenadiers. 
the most valuable unit for Asia Mint, if we do the little shuffle there, it was the Fox Grenadiers, but his uh, x has got three vehicle destroys. Love Nest, six pounder. A lot of damage dealt. And Dev M, Penal Battalion. Meanwhile, on the overview screen, you can see that... Uh, I think Dev M had a weak game in that one, it must be said. I think he's got... Uh, to shine in game three to make up for it. Asher Bloor and Asia Mint were pretty much neck and neck. They were very, very good synergies there, it must be said. On the graphs, you can see the army value wise. Saw that huge dive from Dev M there as uh, he pretty much lost everything after the 29th minute. And after that point, it was uh, he was just trying to stay in the battle. Uh, AE in dressing gown warning. There you go. New Master League poster. That's pretty cool, you got to say. Somewhere up above my head. We are going to try and get my RAM back. I tell you what, 94 viewers. Do you want to see my really cool Master League intro that I've been making? How about that? Let's go and uh, put that on for a little bit. Add video. Okay. So I'm going to set this scene off very quickly. Add VLC video source, okay. Add something to the playlist, add files. Go to intro video, it's my intro, intro four. Uh, do not loop. <laughs> What do you think about that then? Pretty cool, isn't it? 21 seconds, that took me six hours to make. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's cool at least. Antemoral likes it. Ah, relative says it's epic. Uh, to be honest, there's loads of stuff you have to watch out for here because it's one of those um, things that you think is quite simple but it's got so much going on. So just watch it again and see if you can pick out a few things that I might have done to make it happen. It's got a few tricks of the trade in, let's say. One, one more time, one more time, because it did take me six hours, so you're going to have to watch it again. The Master League. I just need to do some voice art, voiceover at the last bit, don't I? Really cheesy. Welcome to the Master League. You know, that'd be cool. But now the Master League is going to be fucking pro. I think it's going to be uh, really sustainable. Master Yeet. And honestly, guys, it, it's genuinely a really interactive experience. It's just the price of a Twitch sub gets you in on the Discord. And that means you can vote on tournament concepts and all sorts and uh, just see all this kind of stuff first. It's a, it's a tournament just go and read the the Patreon. I mean, I can explain it to you now. Basically, instead of me like um, getting out the pan and asking for money every time I want to do a tournament, I thought, why not we set something up in the community? I, I don't mind heading it up because I've proven that I'm a well-trusted individual. Um, where we have this community fund, everybody puts in a little bit of money. You can either put in five, twenty, or fifty dollars, depending on how rich or how mad you are, and um, and then we've got money ready to go. At the moment, we've got $810. So you times that by two because we're going to try and do a tournament every two months. Uh, if that doesn't work, we'll do one every three months. But uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be pretty epic. The first tournament um, will be really cool. I can pretty much announce it now, to be honest, because the vote's finished. But uh, I mean, I'll announce it properly at some point with some post on some site or whatever. But yeah, it's going to be... Um, <sighs> What is it called? It's German. It's a German name. I know this. I know this. Man lebt nur Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, thanks to, to Dren's Dan Shuffler. It means you only live twice. And it's obviously named after James Bond. So I have a very cool intro for that as well, which is... Uh, 
It's going to be good, but it'll be on the last two weekends of June. It'll be open to all participants, but only the top 32 players will be chosen. Uh, the other, th I mean, I'm, I'm going to just talk about the Master League for a little bit. The other cool thing about the Master League, by the way, is that it has this, which is the uh, first of its kind seeding system and universal ranking system for tournament players. Um, putting people that win tournaments, giving them a ranking based on what tournaments they won and giving them points and it all feeds in. It's a rather elegant and beautiful system. You know, I designed it, so of course I'm going to say that. But uh, it works really well, guys. And I would, uh, if you've got a nerdy moment, just go and check it out. Um, and of course, uh, it all links into the same system. So we're going to have a tournament every two months. It'll use this system, which will feed back into it. So you guys uh, provide the cash. And the benefit of you guys providing the cash, by the way, is um, it, we, we, we're advertisement free, you know. We don't have to worry about uh, about sponsors telling us what to do. We don't have to worry about trying to placate game publishers or um, not placate game publishers. That, that That's Sega, isn't it? God, they're lovely. No, we don't have to worry about um, third parties who don't understand us and our game series and our community. We can just have like purpose-built tournaments for us, by us, and not having a corporate presence is, is like it means there's no pressure you don't have to worry we can have tournaments called corona cup and do crazy maps and 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 stuff like that but um yeah it's just a good good idea exactly more hitler jokes in community funded tournaments you can't really joke about hitler in a, a publisher or sponsorship orientated tournament imagine if overclockers sponsored us for gcs3 i'd be like uh dabbing sweat and stuff I'll tell you what when ESL screwed us over and those microphones didn't work at GCS1 do you know what they did they told me to remove um, at GCL studios at ESL studios off my overlays do you know those overlays were hard coded overlays they were in photoshop so whilst everything was going wrong I had to photoshop out the words ESL they didn't care that the microphones didn't work and they didn't go and get us better microphones they just made sure that their name wasn't associated with it well, what went wrong is they didn't put enough effort into prepping the event. I know we were only paying them £1,000, but um, it's still £1,000, isn't it? I mean, we did everything else. We didn't leave a mess. We didn't do anything wrong. And they just didn't set us up with good enough audio. They gave us... Um, Stormless was of the, of the assumption that he didn't have to bring his audio equipment, which is fair enough. You know, I, I, I didn't think he had to either. And then ESL just didn't give us audio equipment. If you go back and listen to the cast, they're awful. They sound like Daleks having sex. It's not pretty. Anyway, I was meant to cast Game 3, wasn't I? So here it is. Let's get it, let's get it, get it loaded in. Go. I do like whiskey. There's a whiskey bottle right behind me, isn't there, Gans Girl? I think whiskey's a great drink because it's uh, low calorie. And, um, you know, if you get a nice bottle of whiskey, it's quite smooth. You just have a swig, chills you out. You don't have to worry. You know, it just means your neurons aren't firing quite as much. The cast is certainly not overstrung, Ing Bird. We are now about to officially load in with game three and uh, let's just quickly update the scores just so everybody knows who's tuning in late because here we go this is game three between in the south it's team elite who have to play as allies because uh, they haven't done well enough they lost game two by a, a much wider VP margin and we now have Devon the Portuguese prodigy um, playing as Soviets love nest again as the dastardly Brits, Ashablar, locking in with his infantry company, and Agement, whose first grenade is rocking straight into battle. This, of course, is uh, the venerable two versus two map. I'll stout skirts, and it, uh, it's a fantastic map. It's probably the best 
two versus two maps, I think most people would say. Some people have started to say that uh, they like Eindhoven country more and stuff like that, but I, I don't see it, quite frankly. Tommy's um, pushing in on the edge of the capping circle. And this has got to be a cutoff there. They've got to protect because it's very exploitable. Makes the south position uh, a tricky one. But there is this cutoff north, which, uh, technically speaking, should be as pushable. But I think these hedgerows don't work quite the same way. You notice this hedgerow possibly, uh, in this one here, act to shield the force pushing in against the cutoff here. That's how the map tends to favour the north sometimes. Nice denial of cover from Asher Blah as his MP40s blaze against the conscripts, allowing for the French Grenadiers to come and defend the cutoff. Notice that there. You might think Asher Blah is in an engagement he's never going to win, but uh, he's buying time for his teammate to push into position. Love Nest with the same commanders. And Devem. Oh no, hang on a second. Devem's gone for a much better commander. He's gone for mechanized support tactics. He's changed his IS2 into an ISU 152. He's gone from a Charmeleon to a Charizard in terms of um, anti tank capabilities. Asia Mince Bulletin. Somebody says a memes. I'm not so sure. You know, he gets medical supplies 7% less. <laughs> okay, yeah, memes. 251 builds, 75% faster. Increased maximum movement speed for the supply half track. Well noticed by What the Fife in chat there. I did not notice that. That's hilarious. Can I up volume my voice? I can certainly pull the microphone closer to my face and speak a bit more loudly. Uh, I thought the mix was okay, but maybe I'm just being a bit quiet because it's early morning, perhaps. Conscripts. Versus Grenadiers in a battle as old as time. Stern Pioneers though on the retreat path with French Grenadiers accompanying them. And giving the conscripts a journey to death. Almost certain death. How did they live through that? No they didn't indeed because this French Grenadier squad finished the job. More folks out for Asia Mint. First squad wipe against Dev M. Love Nest with the three Tommy squads just defending the uh, cutoff for now and also putting pressure on this uh, victory point is the Vickers using the fence to protect. Check out the movement speed on this half track, by the way. Look at that. There you go. 5% increased movement speed. That is rapid. Diddling, diddling. How did the theme from Knight Rider go? Just imagine that in your head as the SWS <laughs> smashes through the countryside. The governors are off, baby. For those that don't know, by the way, SWS had tr crush when it first came onto the field. And it was a fantastic thing to do. You could just build one really soon and just go around the battlefield, crushing all the cover points and pushing units. Everybody did it. It was hilarious when OKW were first launched. And then you just got loads of folks Grenadiers with Panzer Shreks and uh, blobbed your enemy to death. Ah, those were the times. Oh, and it's Latch, of course, in chat, reminding us that they were indeed free. Well, there you go. Grenadiers forced away. That isn't negative cover. If they were a little bit south of that, they would have been. Tommy squad going all the way around the corners there. Did not want to get caught out by a squad in cover, and indeed it didn't. Conscripts back in force as Dev M's going straight into uh, support armor company. Support armor company. What am I on about? Support weapon company, that's the name of it. It's uh, Sunday morning jitters. Makes me sound like an alcoholic, doesn't it, if I say jitters? Mine coming down for Dev that was an awkward silence. Mine coming down for Dev M as the conscript free position up north. Maxim gonna push straight into the centre, it would seem. As we've got some decent mining as well. From the Royal Engineers. It's an interesting one that is. 
So that's almost as though that they're expecting the cutoff and then the uh, units will go north after they've taken it, which will leave them vulnerable to being uh, killed on retreat, just like these conscripts are. As again, Asia Mint is bullying Devem. Panzer Grenadier is now out as well for uh, Asha. Got lights mechanized and a uh, healing bunker. Also, we all actually seen one of the bulletins used. We all seen med packs down for Asia Mint. He'd rather spend munitions than use the extra micro to move to his opponent's fortification, it would seem. Panzer Grenadius. Forcing the conscripts away as the Maxim is prepared. Good play by Devem there. Let's check out the centre. As the Royal Engineers face off against the Stern Pioneers. Causing them problems. And there's a mine here as well, don't forget. Grenadiers, I don't know what they're thinking. I tell you what, these Royal Engineers are going to gain a lot of veterancy from this. Or experience, rather. And there you go, you can hear the abilities ready, thanks to their good work. Do we see a minesweeper popping? No, we don't. One of these is going to get triggered. Maybe on the retreat path now. Ah, and there you go. Vickers by Loveness in perfect position. We do, by the way, have this folks here from Asia Mint going all the way down the south, causing a double fuel situation for the Axis in this deciding ace game. It's not quite looking uh, perfect, is it, at this moment in time? We've had a squad wipe for the Allies. Got double fuel against them now. Oh dear, oh dear. And here comes the Panzer too to make uh, a departure from the earlier games where we saw Battle Group. We're now seeing a bit of mechanised mayhem. We do have the AEC out and waiting. But uh, should it operate from behind the veil of uh, this pack 40 that's building for Asher, it should be fine. It's also got a lot of Faust to protect it as well. Okay, pen in chat with the uh, compliments. Thank you, my sir. Couldn't cast yesterday. My dog decided to eat chocolate instead. Meaning I had to go to the vets instead of cast. But uh, I can do some on Sunday morning for you guys. As long as you don't mind a little bit of replays. AC just poking around looking for a shot. As the pack 40 makes its entrance. Vickers doesn't have the victory points. But the Tommies will soon take it for them. Guards out for Deva. Not a bad idea it must be said. As the T-70 now makes its entrance into the series for the first time. Often you say that, to be honest, at this level. Gasparitas with a subscription. Thank you very much, my friend. A legend of um, the community. Maker of many a good YouTube montage. TM-35 mine's going to be... Walked around. <laughs> I was going to say a bad one. It would have been. Some Pioneer models are very expensive. Puma on patrol. As the folks from ideas continue their onslaught in the centre. Mm. Grenade dodged by the combat engineers. And they push straight back in. Munitions wasted for Asha Blar. As the guards push in with the Maxim. What's happening in the southwest? The Foch Grenadiers have circumvented Loveness' prepared position. Commandos are out. No kills quite yet. Just waiting and in, in anticipation of their opponent's exploits. Gods. Try and push. Those light vehicles around, but they're suffering casualties. Can't continue to stay there. Pack in preparation as the uh, Grenadiers cap. They are uh, sergeant equipped Grenadiers of the GID. 
AC destroys the cover. Flammen Werfer. Spotted. Ha! Great voice line. Never heard that one before. You're not burning me, you bastard. Sounded like that to me, at least. Mandos have pushed up. They have revealed themselves, by the way. They do have a kill now. So no super secret grenade on retreat. James Bond style attacks. Try the new emote, uh, K-Pen and Kasparatus. Do A-E-C-O-H capital M capital L for Master League. The premier ongoing tournament series for the uh, Company of Heroes franchise. Maxim as the conscripts shout hurrah, but they don't actually do one. They're just being very enthusiastic about their vaulting. I tell you what, this game is a little bit standoffish at the moment. So we trade territory sectors. It's, it is quite fluid, but there's not. There's a lot of uh, defensive posturing as well. looking for the Puma. But the Raketenwerfer had him scouted. As does this Raketenwerfer. This could be bad for Lovenest. Oh, Raketenwerfer flies by, but I tell you what doesn't. The Puma shot, and that gets the kill. Not looking too good for the Allies still. I'll maintain that position. I mean, they've been able to keep victory points. They actually are ahead slightly there, but um, they have lost more material. Six pounder was waiting. However, the Sturmgewehrs may cause it problems. Does it still have an angle? Yes, it does. Rear armor penetrated. If only Tommy's had a snare, that's what Loveness is thinking. Cut off, exploited by the Mandos. As the T70 claims its fourth kill, and the flamethrowers push in. Sendry grenade as the fuel is exchanged hands as the allies control the north meanwhile by the way the mandos have been unveiled that's not going to be very good for love nest is it looks like they'll be able to survive looks like it at least for now vickers unveiled by the loops where's the anti-tank when they need it nowhere to be seen Six pounds all the way back in base. He's trying to wed the storm and psychologically uh, pray that um, Asia Mint thinks there's anti tank coming. And uh, he wasn't buying it, to be honest. He kind of moved around a little bit, but he still continued the onslaught. Maybe that was just what Love Ness needed. Asha Blah with the Panzer IV. Agement getting the Schwer down, deep in his own territories. If the best player currently in the world, having won the last major 1v1 tournament, decides to put his Schwer deep behind his base, I think we all should really. Seems like it pays dividends to do that on average. Tommies are actually out of the uh, range, not the range, the sight of that MG as the Panzer IV and the Lukes push in with the Panzer Grenadiers running behind them. Puma offering fire from behind. I just can't see the Allies' next move here. Seems the Axis have been able to exploit that double fuel situation and get more armor out more quickly. And they're just marauding now using this L-section road to uh, traverse the battlefield. That said, though, the Allies have maintained a good victory point position. Mando's lob a grenade, easily dodged by Asia Mint, despite it probably being 4 o'clock in the morning where he was. Land mattress artillery on the way. 
Land mattress an option. For only 350 manpower and 40 fuel. It's a bloody good unit for that price. Six pounder in a good position and gets an MGD on the Puma. He was able to cap this point, was Loveness, and he built some sandbags whilst he was there. Got a double fuel now situation for the Allies, meaning we're going to be seeing some tanks very shortly. We do have um, the T-70 rampaging in its ninth kill, and the guard's doing well as well, but the pack is waiting. Grandy is very lucky to survive there. The pack was decrewed by these conscripts. Great assault by Devon. Tell you what, that T-70 could have pushed in a bit sooner for my money, though. Maybe a little bit wary of the Puma. Which was had its M main gun destroyed, so he had no right to be. Pack decrewed yet again. Panzer IV still being repaired. So that's what he was probably worried about. Meanwhile, six pounder repositions to keep the Puma, sorry, the Panzer II at bay. It looks like the Fox Grenadier and MG combination were more than a match for this Tommy squad, and they relinquished their position. What's this? We've now got the Cromwell Elk for Lovenest, his first medium armour of choice. Devon building a T-34 as well, so the Allies were delayed. But uh, they kept victory point pressure all this time. Oh, there's a big shot from the six-pounder. That could be a killing blow. Will he find it? No, he misses. Big nade, though, from the Mandos. Getting two support weapons there. We saw that Asia Mint was caught napping, and the Cromwell's now going to come in on the attack. Love Ness, possibly with a GG push. Can he get the killing shots, however? There's no anti-tank to help Asia Mint now, as Love Ness gets his vengeance from the Corona Cup and looks to finish the job. He's going to march past the Panzerfaust because he's not sustained any damage thus far. There it is, but it doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, in the centre, DevM's pushing in. He gets the killing blow, does he? No, he does not. And the Luke survives. We do now have a damaged engine. The Puma has the same situation. Panzer IV's coming after him. Oh dear, oh dear. Cromwell pushed in and didn't get anything. But I have to say, did they get all those support weapons? Well, they're covering for them, but the six pounder might get taken out and turn. Indeed, it is. And Cromwell's out of control. That is unfortunate, isn't it? Yes, is the answer. T34 and T70. Looking for a push in the north. Loveness lost his six pounder now as well. Oh dear, oh dear. A little bit of failed fish. Not like this. The Luke's lived, the Cromwell died, and uh, the team weapons actually ended up in Axis hands, it would seem. The Allies looking for a wing and a prayer. They do have victory point control still, it must be said. They just seem to be exerting a little bit of better micro with infantry around the victory points, but uh, as far as the tank battle goes, they didn't do too well then. T-34 pushing away units in the north, this pack has been decrewed by it, it would seem. Mines in the uh, north centre. Luke's lived and uh, has the veterancy to tell the tale about it. Zis won't be able to get into position in time. Rifle laid on the doorway. <laughs> DevM just sits there. Of course he's got a Maxim, so he'd have to depack anyway. Puma's coming in. We've got a turret jam. Mine goes down here. Puma's going to try and finish off the T-34, but uh, it misses. Could have been a killing blow, however. Now the conscripts are there. Again with a miss. He's looking for an anti-tank grenade. No, he gets the decrew on the pack 40. That could be a steal, I tell you. Mind you, the Panzer IV might have something to say about that. Conscripts can move for an AT nade. They might leave themselves vulnerable to being killed on retreat. Now they're on negative cover, don't forget. Meanwhile, 
The commandos again decrew another support weapon. Let's check out the north situation. Has he gotten away with the pack 40? Yes, he has. He has more conscript shielding. T-34. Watches on. Panzer IV pushes in. Let's check out the south yet again. Loveness was able to steal the MG. Bit of... Uh coordinated fire from the oh nice mine AT grenade combination with the Ziskun taking out the Puma meanwhile the Panzer II is peppering him with fire but here comes the Cromwell coming around the veil land mattress is on the field for Love Nest I'll tell you what there's a lot of consolidated forces here T-70 causing the Panzer grenade problems but there is indeed decreed as the T-3476 pushes in and it's Brethren does the same. The Pack 40 was decrewed yet again. T-70 is looking to take out the Panzer. Let's see the British forces in action as the commandos wait and anticipate any more support weapons daring to be alive. T-70 finishes the job there on that Grenadier squad, gaining Veteran C-3. Meanwhile, look at this. Those naughty Mandos. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. Panzer IV pushes in, takes out the Vet 3T70. However, does the uh, Ziskun finish the job? No, it can't. Somehow it survives. Six pounder, of course, stolen earlier. Could go on a T34 killing frenzy here. Spoiled for choices, as is the Raketenwerfer. One shot hits. Can the Raketenwerfer finish the job? Needs to fire. Gets the kill. Let's check out the Brits in action as the commandos. Get the killing shot. Land mattress is yet to fire. Mines detonate under the feet of the Raketenwerfer. Oh, another squad wipe on retreat for Loveness. He's going full Mando. And some might say you never go full Mando, but in this case, it's working out very well indeed. Faust on the Cromwell. Mando's Vet 3 forced away. But uh, they're going to go home for tea and biscuits. Uh, hopefully a bit of crumpet as well, because they deserve it. Royal Engineers with nine kills, flaming away. What's happening in the north? Looks like we've got a Zis barrage on the victory point. As still, the Allies have been able to maintain pressure on the victory points, and the Axes are really starting to bleed now. 180. Raketenwerfer looks to kill the sandbags. As we see, a stolen Raketenwerfer, two of them, in fact, push in. And Asiamint and Asherblast see the writing on the wall. They just don't have what it takes in this third deciding ace game. They've played strong. They've played hard. But Love Nest and DevM had too much for them. And it was obviously very late night in Korea. But you can't doubt the fact that, that Love Nest and DevM just had better APM and better overall uh, mechanic, um, kind of overall pressure. Coming to Heroes is often about pressure and uh, in this case the exerted pressure for longer, for harder and for more in more areas and uh, it eventually caused their opponents to yield. This was the deciding game meaning that they are of course going go, to go through into the semi-finals which happened today. Um, I wanted to cast this game because I think that uh, it features the two best players on the planet today in Love Nest who will those, he was rusty at one point. He's still the reigning world champion. And Asiamint, who uh, bettered him in the Corona Cup in that semi-final. Um, so thank you for watching, everybody. Again, trusting you on warning. There you go. A little bit of Hugh Hefner for you. And uh, thank you to everybody uh, supporting the stream and just enjoying the action. Uh, it's a nice little Sunday morning treat for you. Big, big up to the... Um, the co-master league you want to see some incredible 
uh, one versus one tournaments coming soon. You have uh, every right to do so because uh, people are funding this in droves, meaning that we're going to have an excellent prize pool. It's, of course, 100% of it goes into the prize pool after PayPal. Sorry, not after PayPal, after Patreon take their cut. But it's a good platform. You know, it's a very transparent platform. It's well known, so it's well trusted. And I think it's a good one, to be honest. Uh, if you go on the public version of this page, not that bloody version, this one, you see that uh, you've got your awards there that you can get. You've got the goals down below, and that shows you what we're dealing with now. For, um, we've got a pretty hefty prize pool of $1,000 for our first tournament. Not bad at all. So we're going to go for two tournaments a month. And, uh, yeah, so... So yeah, thanks for watching, one and all. Hope you enjoyed your stay, and hope you have a lovely day. Um, I've done my bit casting this tournament now. I'm not down to cast the rest, because I said to Curry he that I wanted to see people like Greyshot get a better chance than me. Because to be honest, I've got a lot of casting to do later in June. Um, and I need to take a break, and obviously I've got, you know, just, just keep, keep my life in balance. But I do like to do some casting for you, for you all, and uh, I enjoy it myself. It's good to keep my YouTube uh, active I've got a lot of subscribers waiting for content and uh, it feels like I, I really enjoy making content for YouTube I always get loads of good comments on there as well so if you're watching this on Twitch feel free to go and uh, give me a little subscriberino on my old YouTube account there I realized this uh, Sunday morning is that spelt right why didn't that kick in there K pen master it should work. Move bot. Is it League? Oh, it's League. I thought I'd change it to Master League, to be honest. No, it should be Master League, because everybody seems to be going with Master League for it. I'll, I'll change that up by the time my next stream. Do you like the poster, by the way, K-Pen? It's pretty cool, isn't it? No, it wasn't your fault this time, my friend. This time. The brackets. Shall we have a little look at the brackets together? Now that we're spoiler free, well, let's do it. Uh, where do I find them? Let's go on the uh, Kurahi Discord and have a look there. It's got to be there, surely. And there it is indeed. So, no surprises, but Scotch and Nagano made it through to the finals, beating Orange Pest and Barton. Pretty tricky start for Orange Pest and Barton. They weren't seeded very high, were they? Um, Theodosios and Thantos and Bros Rasenartovic meet them. Bros Rasenartovic, by the way, are capable of taking out Scotch and Nagano, so be on the watch out for that semi final. Um, Hooligan and Referro have uh, made it through to. Well, sorry, made it through to face Bros Rasenartovic, but lost valiantly, it would seem. Devem and. Uh, Loveness getting somewhat of an upset over Ashablar and Agement in the battle we just saw. They face now seeking creative name, but with a fresh pair of eyes, and um, and that will be a very interesting battle and in, for certain. I think seeking and creative name are a fantastic team. Um, I possibly would have seeded them a slight little bit higher, but uh, still they got a pretty strong seed to be honest. And uh, they beat Helping Hands of Von Aston two 0 yesterday. So there's your semi-finals. There's your semi-finals. You're looking at um, Scotch and Nagano versus Bros Rasenartovic. And Devem and Loveness versus Seeking and Creative Name. So uh, all killer, no filler there for certain. Eight fantastic players playing for you later today. So if you enjoy that, guys. And uh, I'm going to go away now. I'm going to have possibly another coffee. I'm feeling that way. Maybe take the dog for a walk. Ha! <laughs> Well, the, the casting's finished now, mate, so there's no no spoilers now. Yeah, it looks like uh, I think I think there's some fantastic games yesterday. I did cast, by the way, I've, I did cast last night, but I was pretty tired, and I'm not sure it's my best work, so I thought I'd do some more casting and upload this instead. Um, I cast Devam and Loveness versus Legio Roma Stuve. It was a fantastic game, it must be said. Um, I just thought that. What did I think of that series? I thought Legio, Roma and Stu started to flag towards the end of the game and they made they lost too many squads unnecessarily. So for me, it lost a bit of hype due to that. 
but it's still still a great game. I'm not never going to un- unveil that cast. I have it on YouTube, like 59. It took me an hour and 10 minutes to cast it because I had a few false starts. And um, yeah, like look at, look at my screen. There's a 53-minute cast. That does not meet my quality standards. Because to be honest, I just sound...